Eyewitnesses say it only took police a matter of minutes to reach the crime scene, but obviously suspects were able to elude police and get away in a red sedan. I'm here at First Night Buffalo. I'm at, hey, I'm with Baby Joe Macy. Hey, wait a minute. This is not fair. I'm trying to do a live shot here. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'll get to you in a minute, buddy. Right. This story is continuing to unfold at this very moment. As you can see behind me, emergency crews are still on the scene. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Now, what is the very latest? What can you tell us? I know that you've been following this for quite some time. You've kind of been in the loop. What can you tell us about it? Let me paint the picture for you here. For what was supposed to be an afternoon of fun for a, a man and his female companion has turned deadly at the Seaway Pier. According to Singleton, when the shots occurred, he jumped this fence and then ran across this field. Now from the field, he ran about 300 yards down Vance Avenue to Danny Thomas, where he saw a police officer writing a traffic ticket. Now, this is a fairly new procedure out of Boston, Massachusetts, and doctors here have not been able to determine the success rate. 7 News has learned Buffalo Diocese Bishop Henry Manziel could soon replace Archbishop Daniel Cronin in Hartford. Radio DJ J. Michael Davis, who is also a Shelby County Sheriff's deputy, was killed while riding his motorcycle. Are you on skis? Hello? Hello? Hey! Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I was up. Hey, actually, I started off with a snowboard. As you see, now I have skis. Linda, I didn't do too well with the snowboard. Aww. I'm going to leave that to the kids. Okay. I'm going to go off into the <laughs> ski thing here. I, I can't handle the snowboard but uh, out here. But keep in mind, at Kissing Bridge, you can come out and take lessons for group rates. is $17 a person, approximately eight people in a group, or you can take single lessons a per person, $40. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm, I'm not doing too good here, Linda, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep at it. So I'll throw it back to you. This was the scene around 3.30 Wednesday morning for one Hispanic family. Investigators say two men posing as cops kicked the front door in demanding money. This man lives in the home but doesn't want his name revealed. They say this is a police. We're looking for more, you know, some marijuana. If you have marijuana, they can, we can arrest you. We can... Send you to Sources close to this investigation tell News 2 the two suspects have terrorized other residents on Lipscomb Street. Two other homes also suffered the same fate Wednesday morning. Now, according to reports, someone from the victim's home waited for the right moment and called. 911 is your emergency for police, fire, and medical. And then hung up the phone. Eyewitnesses say it only took police a matter of minutes to reach the crime scene, but obviously suspects were able to elude police and get away in a red sedan. Meanwhile, police say they're on a massive manhunt, searching for the two intruders causing fear in the Hispanic community. If this continues, uh, somebody could very well get hurt. Uh, like I said before, there's Anytime you're dealing uh, with people that are committing these type of crimes, you know, there's always that possibility because you just don't know what anybody's capable of, and especially if they're bold and brave enough. Now, authorities are encouraging anyone with any information to come forward. They say until these predators are caught, any Shelbyville <laughs> resident could be their next victim. Jacques Jones, News 2. Police say the quick thinking of a 16-year-old possibly saved her life. Now, police have in custody tonight 32-year-old Donald Vaughn. Vaughn is charged with attempted kidnapping and solicitation of a minor. Last Friday, Vaughn allegedly approached a teenager for sex. Investigators say the victim then immediately ran from Vaughn to her home, where she then called police. When officers got into her neighborhood, the suspect had fled the area. But she did work with us over the weekend and on Monday. And on Monday of this week, she viewed a photo lineup and positively identified the suspect as Donald Vaughn. Now, police are continuing to work this story along with News 2. Of course, stay with us. We will have more developments tonight on News 2 at 10. I'm live in Madison, Jacques Jones, News 2 at 6. It's a teenage girl's worst nightmare. A potential kidnapper scouring neighborhoods searching for a victim. The man in the van drove up beside her, asked her if she lived in the neighborhood, and then solicited her for sex. Police say that man is 32-year-old Donald Vaughn. Vaughn, a Madison native, is charged with attempted kidnapping and soliciting a minor. The drama unfolded last Friday when the girl got off the bus and started home down Shawnee Trace, a very familiar occurrence for many in this quiet community. I usually get off down there over there by the stop sign and then walk my way on up. 
The teenager was reportedly walking alone, and that's when police say Vaughn approached her for sex. Now, after being approached, police say it was at this intersection where she fled the suspect in an effort to reach safety. After making it home, the young girl called police, but Vaughn had already vanished. It was hours later when investigators say he resurfaced here at Super Pets on North Gallatin Pike, allegedly groping a woman inside the store. Vaughn was arrested by police and then released on a $2,000 bond. Police say that mugshot allowed the 16-year-old girl to identify Vaughn, who is now behind bars. Jacques Jones. News 2. Well, some Raleigh Frazier residents believe a brick wall would solve their problems. They say crime is out of control in a nearby apartment complex and the city must take action. A stone wall 12 feet tall and go all the way around and hook it here and hook it in there where, where they will, will not come in here. Peggy Sharp says their crime problems here should hit everyone like a ton of bricks. You got people of all races that comes in here, back here to this back fence back here, and go in here and buy drugs. We are tired of this in our community. She says this fence won't keep drug dealers from peddling narcotics, nor buyers from trying to get a quick fix. Take two steps, she says, and trash and debris is everywhere, clearly ignoring the signs. So Sharp, along with others in the Grandview community, are signing a petition for a concrete wall. They say this barrier is simply not enough. They broke in the back window. They come through. They stole my TV, which a lot of people did. They stole my TV, call ID, my bird. Police say Ridgecrest is a known hotbed for crime, which they patrol constantly. In late June, 11-year-old Martez Henderson was one of the latest victims of violence here. He was killed by a stray bullet. Shell casings like this one found on the property Saturday show guns are still very much a factor here. You don't know when you're going to be mowing your yard and gunfire going to ring out. You do not know. And Councilman Myron Laurie is also calling for action. We've got to control our own neighborhoods, and we've got to stop the flow of drugs and traffic where drug dealings take place. Now, it's unclear if or when the wall will be erected. Meanwhile, Peggy Sharp and others here say all they can do is wait and hope the city will take action soon. Now, a number of Ridgecrest residents who wouldn't speak on camera say they don't want a wall there. They say their children would be in danger if they had to walk range line to school. In the studio, Jacques Jones, Fox 13 News. In our big story, it's been a dangerous holiday weekend so far on Mississippi roads and highways. Around 6 o'clock yesterday evening, one person died in a three-car accident near Hazelhurst. It's today's big story. The Mississippi Highway Patrol tells us a car traveling east on Highway 28 attempted to pass another vehicle. It was met by an SUV that was heading west. The cars collided and officials say the driver of the SUV was ejected from the vehicle. Then another car that swerved to avoid the collision ran over the driver. The accident is under investigation. And last night's accident brings the number of fatalities over the New Year's holiday weekend to a total of four, already one more than last year's holiday. Highway Patrol officials say two pedestrians were killed yesterday, one in Scott County and the other in Capaya County. The investigation in both accidents is ongoing. Also, a motorist was killed in a head-on collision Saturday night in Claiborne County on Highway 61, just south of Port Gibson. So far, our highway patrol officers have issued nearly 2,400 tickets throughout the state. That includes 41 DUI citations. The holiday weekend began Friday at midnight. Now, here's your Storm Team 12 forecast today. The Morton Volunteer Fire Department has had a busy weekend. Saturday evening, volunteer firefighters were called to this home on East 4th Street. They say the house was fully involved when they arrived. Authorities say it's too soon to tell how or where the fire started. The family that lived in this house lost everything, but firefighters were able to prevent the fire from spreading to neighboring homes. The Prentice community said goodbye to one of their fallen police officers Saturday. Ron Jones was shot and killed in the line of duty. News Channel 12's Gina Marie Brown has a story. 
Saturday afternoon was not the same for many in the town of Prentice. Channel 12. And black ribbons have been put out throughout the Prentice community in remembrance of Ron Jones. Closer to home, Jackson State University held a memorial service this weekend for one of their own. Former National Alumni Association President Dr. Estimore A. Wolf was remembered for his many years of service. Wolf was a graduate in 1947. He served as president for more than 10 years, and colleagues say he spent more time and effort than any other alumnus in promoting and recruiting for the school. He was known for his financial support of JSU as well. Wolf was an educator in the Detroit public school system. He died. December the 12th. DIS is launching the campaign in several southern states, including right here in Mississippi. Teacher recruiting is tonight's big story. News Channel 12's Rodney Dunnigan joins us live from the newsroom with more. Rodney? Yeah. A big difference. Thanks, Rodney. It's News Channel 12's Rodney Dunnigan reporting live. And just as Rodney mentioned, teachers here in the state are getting shortchanged when it comes to pay. Compared to the national average, experienced Mississippi teachers get paid nearly $10,000, less than the average teacher in the country. When compared to neighboring states such as Louisiana, Alabama, and Tennessee, Mississippi also ranks at the bottom compared to these states as well. In other news, emergency workers scrambled to release one person trapped underneath a truck. The accident happened at I-220 and Highway 80 about an hour ago. Police say two vehicles were involved in the accident. A man driving a Toyota Tacoma pickup and a woman driving a Camaro crashed into each other. The man was trapped underneath the Camaro. Both drivers were transported to a nearby hospital. Their conditions are unknown at this hour. On the crime front tonight, Jackson police have made an arrest in the May 30th murder of a 19-year-old Michael Banks. Today, detectives arrest Chad Harris and charge him with murder. Banks was shot multiple times on Northwest Street. Police are still looking for another suspect. Meanwhile, an investigation continues in the murder of a Vicksburg man. Last night, police found 21-year-old Dean Johnson shot to death in the 300 block of Ford Road. Authorities have arrested two brothers they say were involved in the fatal shooting. Tyrone and Kevin Jenkins are in custody. Both men have been denied bond. Police do not have a motive for the shooting. A former Jackson attorney has been sentenced to time behind bars. Rex Foster will spend five years in jail for pleading guilty to federal pornography charges. Already, Foster was sentenced to 15 years in Hines County for sexual battery involving a minor. After his release, Foster will spend three years under supervised release.